Hello everyone, today in our series of DocPlex's KOL interviews, we have with us renowned physician Dr. T.V. Devrajan, who has dedicated his life to teaching and practice of medicine. He took up an honorary teaching position at Madras Medical College and worked there for 29 years without salary. Such has been his passion for medicine. He is currently senior of a consultant physician at Apollo Hospital Chennai where he has set up India's first advanced fever clinic and has been handling it since its inception in 2013. He has authored four books and recently he has released a textbook of medicine. Congratulations sir, for you, that. Thank you. He is the recipient of several prestigious awards including the Padma Shri and the Dr. B.C. Roy National Award for his contributions in the field of medicines. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm happy. How do you generally evaluate a, a case of pyrexia of unknown origin and of the four categories of PUOs, classic, nosocomial, immune deficient and HIV associated, what percentage of cases occur in each category and is there any correlation with age? Yes. Now the term terminology has changed now. It is advanced fever clinic we started now only for prolonged fevers starting from one month to one year and diagnosed by different hospitals. And these patients come under the group of uh, stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 investigations. And most of them come under this group of these four th things you told me. They come under the same group. So within second stage itself, we make a diagnosis. And uh, in the last two, three years, we are doing study on that. We have found 225 cases completed. All cases, we can make a diagnosis in this group of investigations. And uh, there is no change in the age group or uh, sex in uh, these cases. And most of them come under infections. Infection is a super limb degree for producing the cause of the fever. So how useful are the diagnostic criteria, diagnostic imaging in reaching what a diagnosis? Is, what we do, after a full physical examination, do stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage tests and make use of imaging technology. After advancement of the PET scan, this laparoscopic uh, biopsy, the ultrasound scan, C20 slice of CT abdomen, superior metastroscopy, all these are helped us find out. Most of the diagnosis is made because of imaging has helped us. I uh, will give you some examples, some cases. When patient had infected endocarditis, by transdigital echo, we could make a diagnosis of uh, infected endocarditis. But it is not responded to treatment. We did a CT scan chest, we found out a medicinal adenopathy. By metastroscopy, we took a biopsy, cut from tuberculosis endocarditis, only 0.5% incidence all over the world. Like that, CT scan has helped us to make out intraabdominal abscesses, small lymph nodes in the abdomen. An MRI scan with MRA, MRV can make out a cerebral venous thrombosis. Many cases of occult malignancy, occult abscess in the body. All we could make a diagnosis by imaging technologies. So has the scenario changed over the years? Yes, definitely. Previously, they used to make undiagnosed cases in PUO 10%. Then we made 20%. Now it is 0% now. So the differential diagnosis for fever of unknown origin are mainly classified as infections, malignancies, autoimmune conditions and miscellaneous. Which among these are the hardest to diagnose and what are the reasons for the same? This classification still holds good. Infection, autoimmune diseases, collagen diseases, malignancy. In our case, we had 70% cases of infection and 10-10% 10 10 each of uh, malignancy, collagen disease and occult uh, miscellaneous causes. Most difficult cases are occult malignancy. Very difficult to make a diagnosis. Occult abscesses in the body make it difficult to make a diagnosis. In the rare case of immunocompromised host, it's difficult to diagnose. Otherwise, most of the cases we could make a diagnosis as four stage uh, investigations. So, it is usually said that the fever of unknown origin that persists for more than a year is less likely to be uh, due to infection or neoplasm. So, what has been your experience in this? It's slightly different. In my case, there was a tooth abscess, man was going on for six month fever. She had taken antibiotic temperature touching normal, it has come back again. Nuclear bone scan showed the abscess. Second, another patient had a one year fever, went to different hospital in India, by transdigital echo we could make out infected endocarditis. So I agree with you, most of them are due to infections, because one year fever won't be last for a malignancy or cancer, due to infection or a deep seated abscesses. And very interesting case, one patient had a suture material that caused an abscess there, other patient had a low foliage catheter, developed osteomyelitis of vertebra, other patient had a rail tube insertion, developed sinusitis infection and pus formation. 
So, very rare case of infection, agree with you, it is only due to infection for long lasting cases. So, what are the some of the serious diseases that initially present as fever of unknown origins and what has been one of your most challenging case till date and how did you tackle it? About 50 challenging cases, I tell two, three of them. One patient came with a fever of 20 days, ECG showed evidence of pulmonary thromboembolism, we treated with heparin, started improving, sat on the wheelchair, developed perils of all the four limbs due to Gullenbarri syndrome, we gave immunoglobulin, responded very well, developed convulsion due to cardiac venous thrombosis, recovered completely went home. Another patient with a, came with a 108 temperature, 980 blood sugar, kidney failure, respiratory failure, shock. At last, we made a diagnosis of intraabdominal abscess, the intestine gangrene, with a great difficulty. With all the ventilator, with the dialysis, everything done, we opened the abdomen, removed the mass, it became all right. The third case is a swine flu in a pregnant lady. We had to put a prone ventilation, do all measures to make her all right, but she became absolutely all right. Challenging case. The fourth one is tuberculosis of the bronchus, tuberculosis of the liver, tuberculosis of the bone marrow. Same case with the myocardial infection. All these four he diagnosed and became also all right. So, this fever clinic with the package we are doing, we are able to make a diagnosis, give them cure and it is first of its kind in India. So, it is said that 5 to 5, 15 percent of cases of fever of unknown origin defy diagnosis. So, how do you manage a case when the diagnosis cannot be reached despite the best of efforts? There is a doctor in the UK called Peter Dauffer. Mm -hmm. He studied 100 cases of PUO. He could not make a diagnosis of 10 cases. And another 10 cases could not make a diagnosis even after post-mortem. He suggested we can't we give empirical steroids or empirical anti-TB drugs. But we don't agree with that because academically not accepted because evidence-based medicine will not uh, fit for that. Uh, but what we do now, we go by evidence-based medicine as far as possible, don't go for shortcut treatment or uh, empirical treatment. Only in very rare cases, we have had treatment started with anti TB drugs. Otherwise, you must have to make a diagnosis with evidence based medicine. So, you mentioned about uh, evidence based medicine. So, do you <coughs> always rely on uh, diagnostic evidence while managing these cases, or are there times when you need to depend on your extensive experience and clinical expertise? In modern world, it is better to go by evidence based medicine, make a diagnosis before starting treatment. Otherwise, we will be beating around the bush. Better to make a diagnosis and start a treatment. You can talk to the patient's relatives, tell them, I have not made a diagnosis, please wait. Please explain to me every day, be transparent, show them all the reports, they will cooperate very well. Otherwise, if you start treatment somewhere, the whole the symptoms will disappear, fever will persist and you will be not able to make a mark in that. But you have to go by evidence-based medicine. Dr. Devrajan, you have recently launched a book on textbook of medicine. So, would you please elaborate on the contents of the book and how it can benefit the users, the readers? It is a dream of an Indian doctor write a textbook of medicine, first book of its kind to the world. So, what I planned 13 years before, I had a group of doctors, we sat and discussed, why can't we write a textbook of medicine with our own material, our own photographs, our own x-rays, our own material, our own statistics. All of them agreed. It took 11 years, 3 hours a day work, we could bring out this book with 36 chapters. Most commonly available textbooks are contained only 21 chapters. We added here evidence based medicine, medical ethics, doctor and law yoga and medicine, nuclear medicine, atlas of x-rays, ultra system of medicines and also stem cell medicine. All these are not seen in the present textbooks. We want to add this to knowledge of medical students. This book is useful for undergraduates, postgraduates, BPharm, BDS and physiotherapy students. And we have priced it, priced it very low so that all book students can buy that. And it has been liked by many people. I got a peer review from a professor, vice chancellor, Professor of Medicine, final year student, third year student and PG student all have given a very good view about this book. I am very lucky to be associated with this book and it will definitely make a mark and this book will definitely be used by students all over the world. And this is a book which I have published recently. It is going to be one of the books to be used by our students of medicine. Sir, you have been truly an inspiration to doctors <coughs> everywhere. Your passion and dedication to the medical profession is unparalleled. So, would you like to share a few <coughs> thoughts with our members? See, my it is not advice, my suggestion is please read every day, keep abreast with the modern developments in medicine, please attend CMAs to know details about progress, your attitude, affor affordability, availability, amicability, academic work will only help you to become a life in life and patients should be given tender loving care and patient relatives will be 
talking to so nicely talk to them every day discuss them the case and you please be frank with them they will do cooperate very well and you will get a very good results sir and also this days of modern medicine where everything is expanding so much every day what are outdated should not be used now so go through the journals every day go through the at least once in a week refresh yourself and i want you to be success in life only by hard work sincere work availability affordability and also be academic and you be thorough with the medical knowledge every day you read and remove what are not which are outdated please remove them and the uh, last thing is puo virus of unknown origin will be become pko virus of known origin we hope so that sir thank you so much nice to talk to you thank, thank you, you so much sir it was a privilege to have you on the platform thank you so much thank, thank you, you. To stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews, please follow us on Twitter, like us on our Facebook page, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Happy dog flexing!